Can we stand? Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for these graduates, for these students that have worked so diligently to get to this graduation. And Lord, we, we thank you for the, this chapter of their lives that is now actually closing in order to open a new chapter. But Lord, we thank you that you are the author of the book. And Lord, we entrust each one of these into your care. And Lord, that you will fulfill the exciting, great journey that you have for each one of them. Lord, we ask that your anointing and your presence would rest mightily upon each of them as they fulfill the call of the gospel. We thank you, Lord. We ask that your presence would be here in this ceremony. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Would you guys stand and worship with us? <laughs> Good afternoon. We're just going to praise the Lord together. I come one thing, the same God. things out.
just want to be with you. We just, just want to be with you.
Good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us today. It is my honor and privilege to read to you Elam Hill Institute and College's Senior Class Scripture. Romans chapter 8, verses 37 through 39 say, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our class has been through a lot throughout this past year and throughout our entire time at Elam. We've truly grown stronger together through the love of Christ. We have discovered that we can conquer as well the strength of our Lord and Savior, and when we truly have on to Him, we have seen the fruit of this passage. Nothing has been able to come between us and the love of God that He has for us. We have all faced enormous mountains and valleys during our time here, but in the end, we have learned that we cannot walk through life in our own strength, but we really do need to rely on Christ in everything we do. Only then will we be called true conquerors. Congratulations, Elam Bible Institute and Colleges, class of 2021, and may God bless you and keep you in all that you do, and never forget where your strength comes from. Thank you. Good afternoon. It is my privilege to announce our speaker for today's service. He served as the lead pastor of Bayshore Community Church for over 35 years. Bayshore is a multicultural campus church that has as its goal to reach people that are not interested in church and to help believers grow in their faith through an intimate relationship with the Lord. Pastor Danny loves to continue learning and hold an undergraduate degree from Liberty College and the University of Delaware. In addition, he holds a graduate degree from Salisbury University and a Master's of Divinity from the University. He is a passionate tennis player and loves bike riding. He and his wife live in Millbrook, Delaware, and have two married sons and four grandchildren. He is the author of two books, What Am I Thinking? and The Hope for a World Without Hope. And we all rise to our feet and a Clap for our guest today, Danny Smith. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eric. And it's my real honor to be here today. I just love this school and all the people I've met, uh, the faculty members and the board members. Joe Nettleton's been a friend of mine for a long time, and his heart is obviously in this community and in this school, even though he lives in Florida. And uh, the Lord is going to bless all of these people that have worked so hard to make this school such a great success. I wanted to just take a moment and recognize the parents of the students. Are there any parents here today? If you, are, you have a student that's graduating, would you stand up? We want to recognize the parents. You're probably paying the bill, so we want to, like, honor you. All right. <clears throat> How about grandparents? Do you have any grandparents here today of students and grandparents? If you're a grandparent of a student, would you stand up? Awesome. That's incredible. You know, in order to graduate from any school, you've got to have people behind you. And I know you have a loving family that support, support you and uh, in many ways financially and praying for you. And just we're so glad that you've got them with you today to celebrate this special occasion. 
Well, I just want to talk just a few moments here before we get to the main event today of giving out the degrees, which is so important. There's nothing greater than a graduation day and nothing more exciting. And I wanted to talk a little bit today about what is the essence of ministry? What is the essence of ministry? What is ministry real about, really all about? Because uh, this class, class 2021, that's starting today, uh, is starting the ministry. This is the, uh, the advent of their ministry. And what is ministry all about fundamentally? I've been in the ministry for about 37 years, graduated from Bible college about 40 years ago. And so I've been thinking a lot about what is ministry really about? What is it really about? You know, it has a lot of shapes and sizes. There are some people that are in ministry that are pastors. They preach every week. And uh, there are other people that are leaders. They work behind the scenes. Like Joe Nettleton here, he's a great leader behind the scenes. Uh, some people are administrators, like Chris here. Uh, some people are counselors. Some people uh, are evangelists. Some people are missionaries. So when you think about ministry, ministry comes in all types of shapes and sizes. But what is ministry at its essence? What is it really about? And I want you to remember two things. Two things. Ministry is, number one, about loving Jesus. It's about loving Jesus. And number two, out of that love for Jesus, it's serving and loving people. So that's really, at the end of the day, what ministry is all about. Uh, when you think about, you know, what ministry is about, you think about the calling that the apostle Peter received in John chapter 21, where the Lord spoke to uh, Peter after Peter had dismally failed. By the way, God uses only imperfect people in his kingdom. And Peter had just failed, and the Lord came to him, and he said to Peter three times, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. And then Jesus said to him again, Peter, do you love me? And then Jesus uh, asked him the third time, Peter, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Now, there is a difference between loving ministry and loving Jesus. Now, I love ministry. I've been in ministry for a long time. And if you're looking for a challenge, if you're looking for something exciting, if you're looking for something that's not boring, then you want to go in the ministry because it is so exciting. It's not the same every day. It's different, and you never know what you're doing half the time. You have to ask the Lord for wisdom. My favorite phrase of Bible college the first year was, they didn't teach me about this in Bible college. <laughs> and uh, I didn't have a class on this. But, you know, I love ministry. But, you know, loving ministry is not the same as loving Jesus. You can be in ministry and love ministry. All the excitement, all the excitement of building buildings and reaching people and, and getting music programs together and getting a bunch of people together on the weekend, you can really love that and really not love Jesus. So it's the most important thing you need to remember when you leave here is ministry is really first and completely about loving Jesus. I have a good friend, uh, Sammy Fisher. I, uh, Sammy is a pastor in Totter, Texas, and I go down and speak for him a couple times a year and get to talk to his leaders and get to speak at his church. And Sammy and I have been friends uh, since high school because in, uh, when we were freshmen in high school, I led Sammy to the Lord. Uh, we, I told him about Jesus, and uh, one day we were outside playing football and with a bunch of our buddies, and we were walking by my dad's church. My dad was a Methodist pastor. We walked by the church, and Sammy said, I want to give my heart to the Lord like you've been telling me. So we took our beanies off, and we walked down the center aisle of the Methodist church, and just the two of us, and I led Sammy to Jesus, and he met the Lord. We became best friends all through high school. And after high school, he went to prepare for ministry, and I went to prepare for ministry. Sammy went to school and seminary. And his first assignment was the Bahamas. He spent seven years on a little island called Man of War in the Bahamas. And uh, he preached on the weekend and scuba dived and spearfished and had a family there. It was just wonderful. My first assignment was in Gumboro, Delaware. It was a farming community surrounded by bean fields. And I said to the Lord, you know, you know, I led him to the Lord, so maybe I should have gone to the Bahamas, and he should have came to Gumboro, but that's not how it worked out. So 
who was there for seven years. But anyhow, we became friends. And uh, a couple years ago, I was down preaching for Sammy, and we just had the best time reminiscing, having the best time, riding around Totter, Texas, eating in fine restaurants, having a great time. And I met with his leaders, and I preached for him that weekend. And um, when I got home, I, 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 something occurred to me. During the four days we were together, we talked about leadership. We talked about the leadership books we were reading. We talked about uh, what's happening in the big churches in America. We talked about new programs in the church. We talked about staff issues, how to solve staff issues, how to deal with issues that are in the church. We just talked incessantly about the church. When I got home, I realized that not one time did we talk about Jesus. We talked about church, but we didn't talk about Jesus. And it made me think that when we were freshmen in high school and sophomores and juniors and seniors in high school, we used to sit in Sammy's uh, house in the front porch there on Front Street, and we would talk about Jesus into the late hours of the night. We'd talk about the Bible. We talked about how much we loved Jesus, how Jesus had changed our life. And now we are in ministry, and we were just talking about church stuff. And I want you to know that loving ministry is not the same as loving Jesus. There's a difference there. You can love ministry and not love Jesus. And the most important thing you can do is you graduate from this school. And, and I saw it today when you guys were worshiping over here. I saw the love of Jesus in your face, that you love Jesus and you're worshiping him. And you're going to get into ministry and you're going to go into mission work and you're going to have all this stuff happen. And life is going to be moving fast and all these great things are going to be happening. And it's very easy in your journey in ministry to get your eyes just off Jesus a little bit and you become all fixated about ministry because loving ministry is not the same as loving Jesus. And if you love ministry and you don't love Jesus, then your life is going to be topsy-turvy when you go into the ministry because there's nothing more uncertain than ministry. A number of years ago, Karen and I went to uh, Orlando when our kids were little, and we went to uh, Disney World. Write a passage, you got to take your kids to Disney World or you're going to damage them for life. So we took them to Disney World. And we're at Disney World. Karen just loved Disney World. Disney World was the most wonderful thing in her life. She just was so excited about us going to Disney World. And we're standing in line to get on the ride Space Mountains. And my wife just loved everything about Disney. She didn't know that Space Mountain was a roller coaster. Not only is it a roller coaster, it's a roller coaster in the dark. So we got in uh, on that ride. She thought it was one of those little, it's a small world after all kind of rides. And we got on that ride, and it was just a thrill for me to sit behind her and hear her scream the whole time. <laughs> Ministry is a roller coaster in the dark. You never know what's coming. And if you love ministry, you're going to be incredibly insecure because everything changes. People leave, people come, people go. Things happen you can't control. And if you love ministry, your life is going to be up and down. But if you love Jesus, you will be secure because the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is solid. And you, if you love him, your life is going to be secure. Can you say big amen? So loving Jesus is not the same as love and ministry. So make sure that when you go in ministry that you enjoy your ministry, but you never, ever lose your love for Jesus. Now, I love coffee. I really love coffee a lot. Uh, I'm in a 12-step program. I love coffee. <laughs> I, love, I love hard, dark roast coffee, strong coffee. I really, really, really like Starbucks coffee. I'm really a big Star Starbucks fan. In fact, on, my, uh, on one of my birthdays, my 60th birthday, my church gave me Starbucks cards. I got $650 worth of <laughs> Starbucks cards. So that carried me for a couple months. It was wonderful. <laughs> but I'm a big Starbucks fan. I love good Starbucks coffee. I'm not sure if there's one in Lima, but if I moved here, they'd have to put one here. I'm just telling you. But, you know, I, I, get, I got a little criticism a number of years ago about Starbucks. And the criticism, you know, you know, Starbucks went through this thing where they took the Christmas uh, emblems off the red 
cups at Christmas time, and it looked like they were anti-Christmas, and so people were, knew I loved Starbucks, and they were coming to me and giving me a hard time, and, and you know, you know what about this, Pastor Danny, you know, they don't even put this, the snowflakes on the red cups anymore, and I, I, I didn't know what to say, and I shouldn't have said what I said. You never say something, no, you shouldn't have said, and I said this, and I shouldn't have said it. I, I just, after it was out there, it was out there. I told him I would, I would drink Starbucks coffee if they put 666 on the cup. That's what I told him. <laughs> So there was some extra seats in church the next Sunday, but I have to say I meant every word of it because I, I just believe that that's just wonderful coffee, you know. But I, I think the reason I love coffee is when I was a little kid, my grandfather was a farmer. He lived across the field from where I grew up, and my grandfather father, who I deeply love, his name was Lester Jones, and wonderful farmer, little 60, 70 acre farm, he had a little farm tractor that he did his farming with, and I just loved him, he was my, just my favorite relative, I just loved my granddad, and, uh, and so I would go up to his house, and, and he loved coffee, too. When I was a little boy, you know, after we would have dinner, he would take coffee, and he would pour coffee in a cup, and he would take condensed milk in a can, that real thick condensed milk. Have you ever seen that stuff? I think they put it in homemade ice cream, and he put a couple holes in the can there, and he would pour it in. It's real sweet. He'd pour it in, and he'd pour it almost to the top, and then he'd get the sugar bowl, <laughs> and then he would start dipping sugar in, in that coffee. Kept dipping that sugar in there. And then he put a bunch of sugar in there. He put a little more cream. And then he took the coffee, and he would pour the coffee until the coffee ran out of the cup into the saucer. And then we would take white bread, and we would dip it in the sugar, creamy sugar sweet coffee, and he would eat that for dessert. So he was a coffee dealer. That's where I got addicted. <laughs> But what ministry is, ministry is the overflow of your love for Jesus. You love Jesus with all your heart. You worship Him. You love Him. You're passionate for Him. Dear pants of the world, so many people for you. You love Jesus with all of your heart and all of your passion. And out of that love for Jesus, that overflows in other people. That's why Jesus said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And he said, Peter, do you love me more than these? We don't know what these are exactly. Do you love me more than these? And Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. And he said, feed my sheep. Love me first. Feed my sheep secondly. Love me first. Feed my sheep. So ministry is an overflow of our love for Jesus. And I can tell you, I've been around a lot of pastors and a lot of missionaries, and we can sit for hours and sometimes we never talk about Jesus. That's what I love about your president, Dr. Fred. This, is, this man loves Jesus. He just, he's a Jesus lover, and he talks about Jesus. His language reflects that. And you're in a good place to have a leader like him because he loves Jesus, and he's passionate about Jesus. Amen. So ministry is about Love Jesus, and out of that love for Jesus, serving and helping people. So here's the deal. The most fulfilling thing in ministry is to really get this work by people and help other people. Because ministry is really about getting next to people in their lives, getting next to people in their world, and helping them, and loving them, and standing with them, and serving them. And that is the real fulfillment in ministry. And here's a principle that I use in my life when I tell my church this, and here's what I've discovered about life. You cannot help another person without helping yourself. It says, he who refreshes others refreshes themselves. So stepping into the work of other people, helping other people, loving other people, caring for other people, it really, really makes a difference. So when you go into ministry, I remember clearly uh, Ron Kelly, a missionary that was in Guatemala, and uh, it was Ron. Ron. Hills of 
Guatemala in this poor village, and there was this little woman sitting at the front of her hut that didn't know Jesus, and Ron Kelly, who was an engineer, very educated, very sophisticated man who gave his life to follow Jesus, was sitting in the dirt in front of that little, little uh, hut telling that woman about Jesus. To help people, you got to sit on the dirt. you got to get next to them. I was in uh, Marshalls one day shopping with my wife Karen. And, uh, now, I am a, uh, a, beanie, a beanie collector. I have beanies. Uh, and you, you may wonder why I have beanies. You probably got a good guess why I wear beanies all the time. But um, I literally have 84 beanies. That's my, I have a beanie <laughs> fetish. I, that's, another, that's another support group of the beanie collection thing i got going on. But I like beanies. I love beanies. So one day we're at Marshall shopping, and uh, Karen's shopping, and, and I'm looking around the store there. And uh, as I look around the store, I see a rack full of beanies above the the shirts where the shirts are hanging. And so I was just, I was thrilled. I it. And there are some of these beanies. So I'm looking at these beanies, and so I had a beanie on. I was wearing a beanie, and uh, so I'm looking at these beanies. So I took beanie off and I laid it on the shoulders of the shirts that were hanging there and I started looking at these and there were some good ones there and as a guy came next door to me he stood next to me he's looking at the beanies and he sees my beanie and evidently he thinks it's for sale so he takes my beanie and he puts my beanie on now what do you do with a man that's wearing your beanie <laughs> to you. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know to embarrass the man, but he's wearing, and he's looking in the mirror to see if it looks good, you know? <laughs> I guess it didn't work for me. I never wore it again. I took that beanie, you know, washed it and gave it to somebody. But anyhow, <laughs> in ministry, what we do is we put beanies on that belong to other people. We get in their lives. And we sit in the dirt and we help them and we walk where they walk and we live where they live and we pour ourselves out, out of our love for Jesus pour ourselves out and the fulfilling thing in ministry is not preaching great sermons it's not you know the big Easter Sunday crowd which I always love and always appreciate but what the most important thing in ministry is is when you really, really get to help somebody. You really are an instrument that Jesus can move through and help them. I was in the hospital one day visiting a lady uh, that was ill, and uh, I went to the hospital, uh, Seaford Healthcare, uh, Memorial Hospital. I go down the, the hallway, and I, I visit this lady, and as I visit her, I read some scripture to her, and I pray for her, and have a really good visit with her, and so I'm walking down the hallway on my way to, to leave the hospital. And uh, I had quite a bit to do that afternoon. I was going to head back to the office. And so I'm walking down the hallway. And I walk by a door. And when I walk by this door, I had this, this compelling force to stop and go in the room. But I'm a task-oriented person. I'm back bay, and I have stuff to do that day. So I just move. And the Holy Spirit convicted me to go back to the room. I was so I just turned back around and I went to that room and I went in the room and as I went in the room one man in the room in a bed and I went to introduce myself and his name was Buddy and he said I am I'm so discouraged I said Buddy why are you discouraged and he pulled off the sheet and he showed me that that morning they had amputated his leg he was on the verge of all complete despair I pulled the chair next to Buddy, we talked and we prayed and we talked and we prayed and he became my friend that day. I went to see him, he was in low income apartments, I went to see him regularly and we became friends and I was able to minister Jesus to him and I, when I think about my ministry and I think about the almost 40 years that I had serving the Lord, I can tell you that one of the most important things that ever happened to me was stopping the whole 
spoke to me to help a man who was discouraged. Say this with me. I cannot help a person without help When you pour your life out, out of your love for Jesus, you let that love for Jesus flow out of you to help other people. Ministry becomes rich and fulfilling and wonderful. I'd like to pray for this class and uh, before, uh, before I end my part of today, why don't you reach out your, your hand for this graduate class over here. There's students over here. Just reach out your hands for these students. Lord, we ask you to help these students to constantly love you, that their eyes will never be distracted from their main ministry, their main vision of loving you and serving you. And we pray, Lord, that out of the love that they have for you, overflow with a saucer of ministry and that Lord they'll be fulfilled as they help other people we thank you for calling them the calling of the Lord is upon them you've ordained them you you've set them apart and consecrated them for a unique and special work for their generation Lord make them authentic make them real we thank you that they have no guile in them. They're like Nathaniel, and they are walking in integrity and calling by you. We ask this, your blessing, your richest blessing on them. And everybody say with me, Lord, bless these as they go into your work. May their eyes be full of love for you and others. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> He's not half bad, is he? <laughs> Go back a long way with Pastor Danny and his wife Karen. And uh, there's a lot of pastors that have tried to learn from you. Uh, Danny, I'm telling you, brother, I love you. Appreciate you being here. We have the word of the Lord. You're the great man of God. I would like to introduce to you our executive vice president for those. Good afternoon and thank you. Would the 2021 AAS graduates please rise? <laughs> Studying the Bible is the primary purpose of the Associate of Applied Science here at Elon Bible Institute and College. The program has been designed primarily for those who want to be in ministry or for those who would like to gain a firm foundation and also have deep spiritual roots prior to pursuing other degrees or other career choices. And today we have this group of people who have completed their degrees. President Antonelli, on behalf of our faculty, I certify that the students standing here have satisfactorily fulfilled all graduation requirements of the Associate in Applied Science in Biblical and Theological Studies, therefore are eligible to receive their degrees. Thank you. In light of your recommendation, I am delighted as president of the Dillon Bible Institute and College to join with you in presenting the associate's degrees to the class of 2021. Thank you. As I call your name, please come. I would also like to mention that I will be calling names of those who are not here because they were not able to join us. However, they also have completed the requirements and they will be working us online. I will be waving at that time, and their name will be displayed here. So let's also cheer for them. Rebecca Abrams. <laughs> I would like to pause for a minute, because I want to mention something about this special graduate. She has inspired me, and she is an inspiration to all of you. 
because if anyone had a reason to claim extenuating circumstances, it would be this lady. If anybody had reason to give up or to simply quit, she had plenty of reasons. Working, caring for her two boys, and studying, she never gave up. She has not given up, but she endured and she persevered. And for that, I am so proud of you, Miss Latricia Anderson. I want to shake your hand. student could not be here today. We love you, Anna. <laughs> Kayla Albertine. We love you, Kayla. <laughs> Michael Carver. I am also a parent and a proud parent of Samuel Edward Gates. Aiden Richard Claudio. Mark 
Edward Winhold. Congratulations to you all. At this point, you may be seated. We are going to view... by a special number performed by our EPSC crowd conducted by Mary Ed Walsh. I think probably the one that 
always people when you are in college together and not get the change they're making to the world and the things they're doing for the Lord. Just keep doing what they're doing. <laughs> Just have a final thought that whatever area you go to next, whatever whatever um, job you go to, the more school that you stay here, just to know that we all are called to be the church. Keep pursuing God to never lose sight of the things that have happened here, um, all the growth and all the encounters that have with God. We're grateful for all the memories that we've made, all of the adventures we've had, all of the friendships that we've formed, and the relationships we've created. I just, I don't know what you guys said. Remember when we were leaving, like, just trust God. Like, honestly, like, that's the best thing you can do is just continuously, like, seek Him. It's been a great time. Um, I mean, I'm going to miss those that are leaving, definitely. When the devil reminds you of your past, remind Him of His future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Happy to have the moment every single person from our freshman year. Why is it sad? <laughs> I guess it would just be to embrace the process, to keep growing, and whether they're leaving this place or they're coming back for the bachelor program, there has to be a clinging to the Lord that that continues. If not even more so than while they were here, because I went to a Bible college for two years and then left and walked away from the church and the last thing that I would ever want is to see that happen in my classmates and just to keep a desperation for the Lord and never let it go.
The 2021 senior class, would you rise, please? <laughs> the Applied Ministry Certificate Program has been our flagship program. And it has been designed to equip each graduate with the knowledge, the skills, and the tools to allow them to become Christian leaders and to minister. But just about five years ago, we've realized that in today's world, we need to offer our students a bachelor's degree. So we started the process after getting fully accredited in 2018. And since this is and was going to be our first bachelor's, there were a lot of things involved. And I am thrilled to say that in January of this year, we have received all of the permissions to offer and start our bachelor's in theology with various ministry tracks as of fall 2021. <laughs> so this group of students will happen to have the privilege of being seniors twice. That's not many people. And they also, many of them, have already enrolled in that program. So it is my privilege to congratulate you today and also to welcome you back in the fall. <laughs> President Antonelli, on behalf of the faculty, I certify that the students standing here have satisfactorily fulfilled all the requirements of the Applied Ministry Certificate. They have received the endorsement of the faculty and the cabinet and are eligible to receive their degrees and the seal of Elam Bible Institute and College. Thank you. In light of your recommendation, I am delighted as president of Elam Bible Institute to join with you and giving the diploma to the class of 2021. Thank you. As I call your name, please come forward. Jessica Ashley Cavallari. <laughs> Micah Dombrowski. Jeffrey Eric Estrella. <laughs> Nathan Benjamin Leadham. <laughs> Shay McClelland. <laughs> Amanda Julia Ortiz. <laughs> Samuel Wayne Peachy. <laughs> Leah Joel Ronaldo. Fortuna Reynolds. Austin Andrew Simon. Dominique Isabella Jacqueline Smith. Vivian Marie Suarez. <laughs> Eve Helena Taylor. <laughs> 2021. 
2021 AES graduates please rise. As tradition holds, I now ask the Elam Bible Institute and College class of 2021, both the AMC graduates and the AAS graduates. Move your tassels from the right to the left. This is symbolic of making the transition from being a student to graduates. You have now officially become Elam alumni. Congratulations. You may be seated. Now I would like to invite Vivian Suarez to make the senior class gift presentation. Thank you. She didn't give us much time to run back to our seats. Oh. Oh. Give me one second. I ran all the way across the back of that. Okay. Hello and good afternoon. Again, my name is Vivian. I am the senior class president of the last Applied Ministry Certificate graduating class. <laughs> my class in particular, as Danuta mentioned, has the very exciting, sometimes confusing role of being the first class that's ever been offered a full four-year program at Elam. But if there's anybody who can handle, handle senioritis two years in a row, it's those people right there. <laughs> <clears throat> Being that we have, will have two years as seniors, um, our senior class council had an interesting decision to make as to which year, hallelujah, we would give our senior gift. Um, and ultimately, we decided to do both, but I'll explain how. Over the last several years, there has been a tradition for the senior class to host a coffee fundraiser. This year, my class followed suit we held the fundraiser and it ended up being one of our most successful of the whole year. The school was kind enough to let us use the espresso machine that they have available, which worked. Um, but it's safe to say we needed a little bit of an upgrade. So part one of my class's gift to the school is a new espresso machine to pass on to the future classes to carry on the coffee fundraiser tradition. Since those of us sticking around will be seniors again, uh, this upcoming year we hope to host several more coffee fundraisers as well as other events, um, which leads me to the second part of our gift, which is that we didn't want the school to go a year without getting a gift, and we are officially expressing our intent on setting a goal of $2,500 towards next year's senior gift. Now that I've shared our gift to honor the school, I'd like to take a minute to honor my class and everyone who has helped us along the way these last three years. Of course, I thank God with every part of my being for carrying us through some of the most challenging times that some of us have faced. And I extend that thanks to the family, friends, staff, and faculty who have supported us both spiritually and financially and all the in-between. We truly would not be here without you and without you. Now to the beautiful collection of misfits over there that I have the honor of calling my classmates. The Oxford definition of the word resilient is able to withstand or recover quickly from difficult situations. When I think of you, resilient is the first word that comes to mind or at least the first word that's appropriate for a graduation speech. <laughs> I have watched each and every one of you over the last three years face unexpected difficulties and overcome them over and over again. So it's no surprise to me that you all ended up here. Looking past the craziness of bread wars 
and uh, late night runs to McDonald's and a territory war over a cardboard Ark of the Covenant um, and all the other wild things we do. There are two things that I believe mark my class. These two things that are especially notable about you are firstly that you love Jesus with a fervency unmatched by anyone I have ever met. Secondly, you have a compassion for people that has only and has exponentially grown since I've met you. We have tested and been tested by each other in ways only surpassed by literal siblings. The best part of these pseudo-siblings, though, is that we have always been there for each other to the best of our ability and done our best to stay connected through thick and thin. There's no virus, no 10-page paper, no mental health issue, no enemy that's too big for us to fight through together, so long as we have Jesus and probably lots of caffeine. <laughs> we came from so many different walks of life, but I'm so thankful that this part of my walk has been spent side by side with you. The honor has been entirely mine to watch you all die to yourselves <laughs> and, and to come alive in the love of Christ that has carried us all this way. I congratulate all of you for completing this huge step, and I pray blessing over you as you move forward. I pray that you will never forget the faithfulness of the Lord and will all remain close to him for the rest of your days. Thank you for choosing me to lead you this year. And thank you. This has been a year, hasn't it? In different ways with different people. This will be the year that I would say goes down in infamy, but that has been used before. But this has been a year that none of us will forget. It has been my honor and my wife's honor to be here for the first year. We were here in 74, from those who didn't know, uh, to 76. And uh, so Elam isn't new to us, but it's new to us in that we wasn't planning to be here, but the God uh, himself kind of chose us to be here, and what an honor it is. Graduates, rather than me pontificate, I just want to share something with you. I just have a few scriptures. I am not going to preach. Don't worry about it. But I'm going to be very brief, but I feel these are scriptures that God gave me for your life and for what you're going to do. And, and uh, when you leave this place, how God is going to minister to you as he's drawing you to him and uh, as you listen to the voice of God and hear something very miraculous that God wants to do in your life uh, in this culture. So to you, graduates. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2-5. through five, In the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Why? For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head. Be patient. In all situations, enduring hardship, do the work of an evangelist. God has called you to not only preach, but to live the gospel. You're not perfect, nobody is. But do the work of of an evangelist, and you will see the power of God move in you like you never have before. And then it says, and discharge all of your duties of your ministry. Life-giving ministry of redemption 
so that you can change, you can be a culture changer. You are the ones on deck right now. It's up to you. And what an anointing you have. A few just very quick scriptures. This is for you. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my own eye. Fear not, for I am with you. Don't be shaken, don't be shocked, don't be dismayed. For I am your God, I will strengthen you. Even when you think he doesn't, he is there and he will show up, I promise. Take it from an old man. Yes, I will help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, which means a place of honor. The right hand was always a place of honor. And God is going to put you in that to be able to minister the gospel in ways you never thought possible. Trust in the Lord, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your hearts. And don't lean on your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. He is protecting you. He will minister to you. And it's always for the sake of bringing many sons and daughters to glory. That's the reason you are here. And the last scripture, and probably, well, I don't know what's the most important, but please hear this. The things which are impossible for man are possible with God. Remember what I said, you plus Jesus is a majority in anything you're going to do for the rest of your life. So those things that you're going, I just don't know that he can do it. God has a PhD in the impossibility. You've got to believe him. It's a rich, wonderful, exciting time that God has lined up for you. We're excited. We, we glory in this. You are not only ministers of the gospel, you represent this Bible college. It's almost 100 years old, and that just stokes me up. It's a blessing. We love you. We thank you for all that you have done and what you're about to do. Can we give them another round of applause, please? Could you stand with me, please, as we have a word of prayer? Pray a blessing in Ephesians chapter 3. Let's bow our heads. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we could ask or even think, according to the power that works within you, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. In your holy name we pray. Amen.